It is no secret that I like Kubernetes. No, some might even call it love. I use it not only to run applications, but as a control plane for everything. Stateless or stateful applications? Well, no problem, Kubernetes. Serverless applications? Again, no problem, we have Knative in Kubernetes. How about infrastructure services? Still, no problem, that's why we have Crossplane. Kubernetes is a control plane to manage stuff. It is extensible API backed by controllers and containers are just one implementation of that. As a result, having everything in Kubernetes allows me to combine tools in the cloud native ecosystem. Do I want to use GitOps? Well, it works with everything as long as everything is defined as Kubernetes resources. I can use Argo CD or Flux without any issues. How about policies? Yep, they work as well. There's Kyverno, OPA Gatekeeper, Dattree, and many others. What about observability? Well, I did not give that a go yet. And that is going to change today. How should we set up observability for applications running in Kubernetes? We could go with one of the software as a service or cloud solutions like Datadog, New Relic, or we could self-manage it ourselves. There are plenty of choices, and today I will not go into any of them. That's not the goal. As a matter of fact, today I do not care about applications running in Kubernetes clusters. What I care about today is infrastructure and services. How can I implement observability if I manage those through Kubernetes? That's what we'll be looking at today. We are going to use Crossplane to provision infrastructure and services, and we will try to figure out how to monitor them. How can we collect logs and metrics without even going into the provider of that infrastructure and services? I want to be able to observe everything without ever leaving Kubernetes. We're going to take a very quick detour from the main subject, because I have to tell you about the sponsor of this video, which is Datri. It is a security tool that prevents misconfigurations in Kubernetes by enforcing a policy or a set of policies on your cluster. It comes with multiple built-in practices such as NSA, hardening guides, secret scanning, and EKS security best practices. And it offers native monitoring and CLI integration. Please go to datri.io to start your free trial to check out the tool. And at the same time, by checking them out, you will be supporting this channel. Thank you so much. Now let's go to the main subject. Now, before we jump into the demo, I will give you a hint. Events. Kubernetes events provide the base for observability. We might not get everything we need from events, but when resources are defined well, they, as a minimum, provide the information about the state of the said resource. So let's get started. Let's see how we can observe everything happening outside of Kubernetes without ever leaving Kubernetes. I have a quick note though. What I'm going to show is going to be a selection of tools, not a recommendation that you should use those tools. That would be a separate subject. Today, I want to demonstrate principles rather than provide a recommendation which tools to use to accomplish observability of everything from inside Kubernetes. Let me show you the application I'm going to use. And remember, this is not going to be an ordinary application. It will be an application that combines Kubernetes resources like pods and what's or not with the database running somewhere else, in this case, in Google Cloud. So LS, customized directory, I have a base directory or base layer and overlays. Inside of the base directory, I have deployment YAML, which is just the typical, the boring deployment resource that you almost certainly already know. It's how we define stateless applications in Kubernetes, nothing really special. But then I have Postgres YAML, which contains SQL claim that defines, in this case, a database that is a server running in Google. And that database server is Postgres and it has a couple of parameters. Now this is cross-plane claims type of magic, which I will not explain today because Check the video, it's over there. Check it out, uh, it explains 
everything you need to know about uh, crossplane compositions and then some additional links are there as well. What matters is that I'm about to deploy an application running in Kubernetes and using database running somewhere else, in this case in Google Cloud, and I'm going to do all that through Kubernetes itself. I'm using Kubernetes as a control plane not only as a thingy that runs containers. So let me create those resources with kubectl namespaces A team. I want to apply whatever is defined in the customized directory. And I got five, six, seven resources created. And now I want to know what's going on. Now I can do that with kubectl. Everybody can find out what's going on with kubectl, but I want something more graphical, more observability, friendly or people friendly way and I'm going to use Grafana for that and my Grafana is already connected to Prometheus to fetch metrics and to Loki to fetch logs but we're going to get to that later for now what matters is that I'm going to show you a dashboard a very silly simple dashboard yet one that illustrates what I'm trying to accomplish. And what I'm trying to accomplish is to know what's happening with my databases running outside of Kubernetes cluster and what is happening with my Kubernetes clusters themselves. So I have, apart from the pods at the top, I have database statuses and database claims. They are empty right now and they will appear in a second. And below that I have cluster statuses and cluster claims. If I go from the bottom, you can see that in cluster statuses, I have one cluster that is red. It means it is not yet ready. There is something wrong with it or it's being created. It's being created. Let me give you a tip. And I can see the list of clusters. This is a silly demo. So I have only one cluster. Normally I would have more and I would have statuses about all those clusters. Rudimentary statuses for now, but enough nevertheless. And then as you can see, the database appeared, the one that I just created together with my application, it is red because it takes approximately five minutes, give or take, until the database server is created in Google Cloud in this case, and it is configured with database, the schema and everything else. What matters is that neither the databases nor clusters are inside of this Kubernetes cluster. They are somewhere else, but I'm managing them with Crossplane and I'm fetching information about those resources by capturing events and logs and a few other things, which I'm going to comment later. Now you might say, hey, I would like to see the details about all those resources and I still don't like to use kubectl. Well, that's not a problem. What is your favorite tool? Let's say that your favorite tool is Lens because Lens is awesome if you like graphical user interface to browse through Kubernetes resources. And if I fire up, if I start Lens and point it to this cluster, which in this case is local rancher desktop, I can see the pods of my application because that's what I need. I can see ingresses that accept the incoming traffic from outside of the cluster. This is still directly related to the application running in my Kubernetes cluster, but I can go to custom resources section and see the status, the resources related to the cluster and the database running somewhere else, but managed by Kubernetes and crossplane in this case. So here's the cluster claim of the cluster that is being created right now. And I can see the output of the fields that I defined in advance because I created the custom resource definition. I can see that the control plane is being created. I can see that the node pool is having some trouble, which is normal because node pool cannot be created until the control plane is created and so on and so forth. What does really matter is the field ready. This cluster is not yet ready. And that's the reason why you saw in Grafana that cluster being red. And similarly, I can see the SQL claim, which is a Kubernetes resource that is managing SQL resources, SQL related resources, in this case running in Google Cloud, not in my cluster. So I can see the statuses of all Kubernetes resources, no matter whether they are created to manage containers in that cluster or something else, in this case, Google Cloud resources. And those resources can be SQL instance, the databases, if I would have any, I will soon, database users, and so on and so forth. All the resources are captured in Kubernetes with their statuses and their events, and I can see them through Lens. Or I can go back to Grafana dashboard if that's the view I want to use, or both. But right now they're both red in Grafana, so I'm going to skip to the next section. And if Lens is not good enough for you and existing dashboards 
Actually, by the way, I created the dashboard myself. But if that's not good enough either, if you want to go straight into the data, into events, into metrics, we can just go to the explore section of Grafana and query, in this case, Prometheus. I can say, hey, give me all the custom metrics that I added and I will show them later and group them by the kind of the resource and execute all that. And I can easily see what I have right now, what is being managed by my control plane. There is a cluster, there is a database instance, there is a cluster claim, there is SQL claim, and so on and so forth. And I can see how many of each of those I have and what are their statuses without even going through dashboards, just by querying metrics. Or I can say, hey, give me that same metric, but filter it to show only SQL claims and then let's see what are all the metrics related with this specific resource managing other resources that are ultimately being managed in Google, not inside of that Kubernetes cluster. And I get the list with their statuses and so on and so forth. Now we're going to go through fast forward because I don't want to talk about all the different queries that we can execute. The point is that I can use Prometheus to query any Kubernetes resource. And if that Kubernetes resource is managing something outside of Kubernetes, I get all that information as well through the typical events, which are now being fed into Prometheus and queried by Grafana. Now, I did not get all that metric for free. I had to define kubestate metrics configuration to say, hey, apart from the standard out-of-the-box Kubernetes resources, those are all the custom resources that I have in my cluster that are managing different types of resources inside or outside of the Kubernetes cluster. And I'm going to tell kubestate metric, which by the way, is installed by default now with Prometheus operator, what those resources are and how to capture them and what to store, what to save in Kubernetes. Apart from that, I had to define a config map that lists all those resources and gives permissions to the, to the resource itself, to kubestate metric to query them. And that's about it. That's all I needed to capture all the events coming from different resources into Prometheus and those different resources being resources managed from Kubernetes, but ultimately outside of Kubernetes, in this case, Google Cloud, but it could be AWS or Azure or anything else. Now you might say, hey, I still like Lens more than Grafana, but that's not a problem because in Lens, we can go to the events section and check all the events of all the resources and see what they're doing to something, right? What is my database resource running in a cluster doing with database in Google? and so on and so forth. And if that's not enough, I could send those same events that I was querying to Prometheus to Loki, just in case somebody prefers to see the events and what's going on and how Kubernetes is managing stuff as logs instead of metrics, because they have different purposes anyways. So I can go back to Grafana, filter the data source to be Loki, uh, apply a couple of filters, and say, give me all the logs, and logs are being translated, are being created from Kubernetes events. And here are all the events stored as logs. Now, this might be too confusing, so I can go to the details and say, show me only the messages, because that's what I'm interested in. I want to know what is Kubernetes doing with my Google account. And there we go. Those are all the logs filtered to show only the messages stored in Loki, but fetched from Kubernetes events. Now, to get all those logs, I used yet another tool which comes from Delivery Hero, which is called Kate's Events Logger, I think. Anyway, the link is on the screen, probably, or in the description. What it does is it captures all the events stored in Kube API and exposes them uh, to STD out so that Loki and Promptail can pick it up and treat them as any other type of logs. And if you don't believe me, we can go back to Lens, go to the pods, filter by observability namespace, because that's where I installed Kate's event logger, and we can see the logs or events being translated to logs of that pod, just as many other types of logs, but this time picked by Loki. And that's what I used to show it in Grafana. But you can see it as logs of that specific pod. That specific container. Now you might say this does not provide all the details one might need, but I will say this is a good start. 
If you use Kubernetes as a control plane to manage all kinds of resources, some of them being containers, some of them being VMs, some of them being other clusters, others being databases, and so on and so forth, some of them being in the same cluster, some of them being outside, then this is a good start. Kubernetes resources, especially those coming from Crossplane, but there are many, many other tools, are likely going to continue expanding their scope. And that, among other things, means that more and more information will be available directly in Kubernetes. From there on, it's all about using Kubernetes tools to observe the states and the events of those resources that are reflecting some other real resources. And that can be as simple as using kubectl or Kubernetes explorers like Lens or metric stores like Prometheus or logging tools like Loki, dashboards like Grafana, and so on and so forth. Kubernetes is expanding and moving towards being a control plane for everything and not only containers. And that means that we should continue using it not only to manage resources, but also to observe the state of those resources being managed by Kubernetes. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Cheers.